Um, okay. So here we are. Um, I'm calling this a lunch and learn because it's lunch here on the East Coast in the U.S. And uh, this is something that I do at work every once in a while. Um, just kind of go over a topic and hopefully educate everybody else and maybe learn something new myself as well. Um, so I'm here with Luis Molina, and I didn't ask how to pronounce it, but I'm going to take a guess. Martin Augusta? Yeah, great. Cool. Good. All right. <laughs> um, how are you guys? Martin and I are recent uh, contributors to the Super Algos project, and uh, Luis is the lead developer and co-founder of the project, for anybody who is not aware um so today we hope to just kind of answer some questions about the project and hopefully get some other people including ourselves better acquainted with the code base amazing um so martin do you want to start off with some of your questions yeah uh, absolutely so uh, just a quick introduction from my side so i'm basically coming from java world so i'm not a javascript developer so the, also this reflected in my questions that uh, I will ask. Um, so uh, let me ask the first question uh, as I've posed uh, just uh, before. Uh, so uh, me coming from uh, Java world, uh, I would have the first question, let's say uh, where to start. Uh, like uh, I need to really basically learn the Node.js because I don't know that, uh, learn the uh, JavaScript. And the first, my first question is target basically this. Uh, if there, if you would have some recommendations, basically where to start with that. Uh, I don't know uh, how to, where to pick up uh, the JavaScript, how to learn in some resources. I don't know some official uh, reference documentation, whatever. Uh, the same for Node.js. And uh, the following question is if there are any like uh, areas to focus on. Let's say like asynchronous functions or uh, some JavaScript frameworks that are used within the super algos that I, or heavily used in super algos, that I should focus, let's say, that they are spread across the whole code base. That, okay. Okay. Um, well, you don't have to worry because we are, we are using here the very basic stuff. Uh, all you need to learn is Node.js. Mm -hmm. And pretty much that's it. Uh, at the browser level, we are uh, most of the things that are happening there are inside. A, it are, it's all plain JavaScript, and we are drawing a canvas object, uh, an mm -hmm. HTML canvas object. So it's it's an animation on a canvas, very much similar to I guess how a video game would would, would be done for the browser. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and what is not inside this canvas object is um, is just plain HTML and, and, and CSS. Okay, so there is no other framework so far, at least on the platform that is the software that is currently developed. On the on what is coming next, that is this peer to peer network and some social social trading apps. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that the people who are going to be doing that will use some framework and they will have to decide which one, mm -hmm. for, especially for the UI. Uh, but my guess is that it will depend mostly on whatever they are already comfortable with. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just made from the desktop application, I just made like a, a sketch so far and I didn't use any framework at all. I mm -hmm. just HTML and CSS. Mm -hmm. well, it's, it's quite simple. You don't need to learn almost anything for this uh, mm -hmm. because it's, it's plain JavaScript. Yeah. Okay. So, so my understanding is it's, uh, or what I've seen from the code base, it's not a TypeScript, it's basically the pure JavaScript, right? Yes. That's correct. Okay. So, uh, and uh, for the web application, then my, uh, according to your words, uh, my understanding is that there is no web app uh, framework used. It's basically pure JavaScript uh, drawing to Canvas. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yes. So okay. There are a few things that are in HTML that are these, the documentation panel, mm -hmm. uh, the tutorials. That is, that is HTML. All the mm -hmm. other stuff that you see, the designer with all these nodes and the charting system, all that is painted on a canvas object. And painted means painted line by line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, good. Because so some people uh, also think, or some some people come and, and they ask because they believe that we are using some kind of framework to produce this designer with all this node and all mm -hmm. this stuff, and it's not the case. We 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 develop everything from scratch. Yeah, yeah that, that was actually my impression as well that uh, some kind of framework is used there, and it's uh, surprising to me. Uh, and admittedly, it's surprising in in uh, the good way that uh, everything is drawn and kind of accessed uh, from the low level. Um, uh, regarding the Node.js, would you recommend basically, for example, the official documentation that that is there? I've just checked it uh, today, uh, so it feels to me like uh, quite good to to start with at least. So maybe, maybe if you have uh, some other opinion, or would you recommend yeah. that or something else? The official is one. In, in, to be honest, when when I need to figure out something that I still don't know in OGS, I Google it, and whatever it comes, it's good yeah, for me. It's <laughs> basically what I do too. Yeah, Google is my yeah. best friend. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, uh, so maybe the last question to the, to this topic regarding the JavaScript because it's some time already that I've used the JavaScript and it's some older version where basically the let keyword was not present yet and the uh, async uh, and some other stuff. So we recommend in this area also, I found the Mozilla's um, uh, MDN uh, documentation of the JavaScript, just uh, quickly go through that. It feel to me quite, Good. So uh, at least for the quick refresh, maybe you would you have some other resource uh, to start with? Well, uh, JavaScript have this interesting stuff that I I, I don't remember if, if, if Java had it. I think no, that you can pass functions of parameters. That is that is quite quite amazing uh, and is used a lot here. Uh, at least. Uh, Mm -hmm. also, well, as asynchronic functions also is used a lot. So that's something that uh, uh, that you should uh, look into because it's at the beginning, if you, it can be a little bit confusing with mm -hmm. JavaScript uh, years ago was, was being used with uh, these callback functions, right? Mm -hmm. That can be a little bit con confusing. Then it evolved into another technique with these asynchronic functions with this await comma. Uh, and if you see the code base, the, the, the part that was written years ago is using heavily these, as these callbacks. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. makes the code a little bit more messy. Mm -hmm. And half of the code is with a new way. So there is some maintenance to be done to move it forward all the other stuff but yeah you will you will see both techniques you know, the mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. because one was uh, the one part of the code base is older mm -hmm. great so that that sounds like uh good tips or hints uh what to focus on really okay so uh, if i may to proceed to the second part which is basically the ci pipeline if you don't have any objections Sure. So maybe quickly, I've already answered that on, on the developer channel, just maybe uh, to recap that, uh, to have it recorded here. So if you can uh, kind of quickly uh, look at, look into that, basically where it is defined, what is it doing, uh, uh, when it is uh, executed, if it's, uh, I don't know, scheduled, if it's run repeatedly. And the uh, next question is what version of Node.js it use, basically. This is a question for Brett, not for All me. right. Yeah, I yeah. can hop into this. Um, <laughs> so um, if you look at the main code base, this .github directory has mm -hmm. workflows under it. So we're using the GitHub workflows to do everything. Um, the part that I interface with the most is this Docker YAML. And this is what defines where and how the Docker container is created. Mm -hmm. um, this only runs, and it's defined here at the top, when there's a push or a merge to master and develop. And it should also run, I haven't specifically seen it myself to double check, but it should run when a release is created. So like when beta 13 is released, 
um, this should run and create a beta 13 tag so you can pin specifically to a beta 13 Docker container. Um, these other ones, um, I believe one of them runs every time a PR is created, which is how, let's see if we can find it on this PR that is open right now. Um, this deep scan, I believe that's how the deep scan gets triggered. Mm -hmm. um, so that's every time a PR is created. Um, but that's all defined here in workflows. And the release build also uh, when releases are created. Mm -hmm. okay. and these were just recently added. Yeah, and the question, the steps mm -hmm. basically are yeah, here. So basically, this one, but uh, it kind of like check out uh, the Git repository and I don't know, it runs some build or, or because uh, like JavaScript is not compiled, right? Uh, like Java, because I'm trying to kind of do <laughs> the relation with the Java, mm. right? Where we use Maven or Gradle uh, for that uh, to kind of compile that. Right. Sure so that these and run tests some. So... Yeah. So there, there really isn't anything to build. Um, the Docker containers, um, and I guess the other releases that are created, they kind of create packages, but it's essentially just kind of creating a tarball or a zip file essentially and just kind of putting all the code base into one specific file that you can then download and extract or run to install the program yeah. um so there is no no build so like yeah coming from java there's no maven no gradle nothing like that to compile the code and and make it runnable it's all um scripting language so it all just kind of runs yeah. on the fly <laughs> okay um last question what node.js version is used for that so i believe that that one is like proven to work so that's so the, uh, the ci pipelines themselves don't use a node.js version um but the if we look at the docker file uh -huh. yeah, um, yeah, we're yeah. using node 16 in the docker file Mm -hmm. um, 17 was just released. I think I saw one person say that they ran into a bug specifically because they were running Node 17. Mm -hmm. um, I do not think that I have run into any bugs running Node 17, and I can't remember if I'm specifically up to date anywhere. Um, but yes, 16, I think anything above 15 works fine. I think if you go below 15, you run into more problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've tried uh, sixteen. So, so yeah, works. sixteen is a good safe bet. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I would say that's fine from my side for the CI pipeline. And uh, if I may ask the question, or, or basically the source code walkthrough. So I'm interested, kind of, if you can follow the program execution or the program flow, basically from the entry points or the entry point of the platform to where the event loop uh, basically, or where all the initiation happens when it gets to event loop and basically it waits for the events there. So kind of to get the grasp uh, how um, the whole application is initiated and then, then basically it's about the events. Uh, because I, I try to follow basically, let's say the platform when the node platform is executed yeah. Follow the path basically from the node, uh, uh, sorry, platform JS file, uh, but uh, I kind of get a bit lost. So maybe if you can, uh, not not, really, not necessarily to be in full detail, but maybe with some uh, high level overview, how the execution uh, goes, what everything is executed, and when it stops, uh, to basically waiting for or listening for the events. Okay, okay, I can do that. Um, maybe you can go to the to the file system uh, bread and and so we see the files that I'm going to mention. Maybe. Oh, okay. Um, the, the execution start at the at the at the, at the script called platform, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think I can find that right in here. Yeah. the The only thing that that does is to read the command line. Uh, parameters that you might type, okay, 
And there is one specific parameter that is uh, mean memory that requires to run the process with a special parameter for Node.js, no right? So okay. that's the reason why this is separated from the, from the rest. So essentially the, when this start, it's, it reads these command line parameters and it creates the Node.js process that is actually going to run, okay, the platform. Then it switched to a, to a file that is called platform root. Maybe you can put it there, platform root. Mm -hmm. It's better if you do it in probably in Visual Studio Code, but as you want. Okay, pl this platform root, what it does is like, uh, it loads all the, the external dependencies, uh, meaning the Node.js dependencies, and means libraries that we depend on, okay? Mm -hmm. It loads all the all of that uh, all at once, and it it set ups uh, it makes some setups in in of of other stuff in in memory there, and then it switched to to a file that is called a platform or platform platform app if I recall something like that. Um, is that in the platform project? Yes, in the platform project. Yes. Oh. Okay. Well, here's the platform app. Okay. So what what is what we are doing here is to start the services. Remember that the platform itself has two big components. One that is a Node.js application, and the second is a web app. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the web app runs inside the browser. The Node.js mm -hmm. application is a is a process of of the operating system. So uh, the web application is going to communicate with the Node.js application via two different mechanisms, web sockets and HTTP, OK? Mm -hmm. so one of the first things that we are going to do here is to start the HTTP server that we are going to call the HTTP interface, OK? Because it's the interface through which the web app access the a platform client, right? Mm -hmm. And we're also going to start the WebSocket service or WebSocket interface that we are calling like this, um, so that when the application is loaded inside the browser, it can connect via WebSocket to the client, okay? Uh, so essentially, these two things are started there. And inside the client, the idea is that we are going to have different services. The, 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 this part of the code is a little bit messy because it needs to be reorganized, okay? It was evolving a lot of time without paying the technical debt. So it's, it's, I understand this part is kind of the most messy of all the code that you will find out there. But essentially, the, you, you can imagine this, the platform client, um, like the, the part of the platform that runs in Node.js, uh, it will host different services, okay? For example, there's one that is called the GitHub service or, or mm -hmm. the, the file service or something like this. All the services that are listed there. Uh, Web-free service, for example, if you want to do operations with uh, blockchain accounts, um, private keys and all this stuff. I, I, I found with, with experience that there are many things that even though you can do it at the browser, it brings it, 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 it comes with a lot of problem associated to that because of different browser versions. Uh, something works in one, something doesn't work on the and the browser itself uh, turn off the tab or put it in pause when you are not on focus. So uh, when you access from the browser external website, then you have problem with the origin, mm -hmm. the cross origin, and all this stuff. Yeah. Doing things in the browser means problem. So the, the overall idea was, let's do most of the things at the client Node.js app, and we will create different small services for the different type of things that we will need, even if we need it at the browser, okay? That's more mm -hmm. or less the So organically, this thing were starting to appear. Like we need to do uh, stuff for blockchain conversion, private key or generating wallet. Well, let's add one service there, and we access the service via the HTTP interface mostly. Okay, 
So we can send the service from the from the inside the browser. Okay. We need to access, for example, I don't know, uh, uh, the exchange for whatever for getting the balance of, and then we create a service there. So the, the idea is is more or less like this: avoid okay. doing these kind of things in the browser because it, it in the end it brings problem and you're going to be wasting your time. So uh, in that sense, then the, this this platform client is a collection of different services. Okay, services to be consumed by the browser. Okay, mm -hmm. so when this uh, HTTP interface is run and when the WebSocket interface is run, another thing that happened is that well, all these services are started, so they became they become available from there. On. Then we we. We open the window of the, we open an, uh, a browser, okay? We open the browser and navigate the browser towards the, the address of the HTTP interface of the client, okay? That's how the, how the browser loads the initially one HTML page that you can find it bred uh, if you go to the file system or, or you, you can find it inside platform uh, over there, web server. Oh, okay. The web, the web server is one of all these services that are running there. So, mm -hmm. so it loads this index HTML. Okay. Mm -hmm. The index HTML is going to run. It, it has a process of bootstrapping itself. Okay. So yeah, remember, the, everything starts at the Node.js application. So the Node.js open a browser that navigates to itself. Okay. So it loads this index HTML that it needs to start downloading all the JavaScript files that are going to be the web application, right? Mm -hmm. So there is this process run in a few files that are called, I think they are called pre pre app loader or something like this, or app loader. Uh, Brett, you can find it there okay. also at the app web preloader. server. Yes, app preloader and I cannot see because it's very small my screen. Yeah, app reloader and uploader, something like that. So essentially what, what is going on there in a nutshell is downloading every, every all of the JavaScript that is going to be inside the browser mm -hmm. and it's going to conform the platform web app. Okay? Mm -hmm. At some point when everything is loaded there, then it starts running the, the platform web app. Okay. And the platform web app essentially it runs or the, the start it start running on a file that is called canvas because of the beginning was almost everything in this canvas stuff if you can find this canvas somewhere there but uh, is if you go to the file system i will tell you where it is it's inside one ui folder there now out of web server platform, here Yes, there is one canvas. Okay, so mm -hmm. so that's where it, it actually start running because everything is more or less set up at that point. And by running, it means that it's going to enter into a, a an animation loop, essentially. So what you have is an animation loop, the same that I guess is used for for games or things like this. Mm -hmm. where you have, you have this canvas object, HTML canvas object that occupies 100% of the page. So you don't see anything. Uh, well, when you when you load the platform, you see like this picture of these boxes and some text that is loading, blah, blah, blah. That is what, what it is preloading all this stuff. But then a, a canvas object replaces everything. And from there on, you are seeing an, an, a canvas animation. Okay, So the canvas mm -hmm. animation is is essentially drawing and redrawing again all the all the stuff on this on the canvas uh, as fast as it uh, as it can essentially. So it loops, it, it makes one frame, it draws the frame, and it requests uh, to the browser to execute it again so that it it draw the next frame and then the next frame and. What you're seeing is an animation of I don't know twenty or forty frames per second or something like that, depending on, on your hardware, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
all the time you're seeing an animation very much like a like a video game. That's that's how when you when you run the the platform, maybe you can run it there, Brett. Um, sure. You... Let's see. This is this is still the HTML page. What you're seeing, okay? Mm -hmm. so it, will, uh, it already downloaded all the application. Now it's downloading the data of the first workspace, okay? And it's putting all the pieces together so that when it when it finished this process, everything is there set up, okay? Um, but once the, once this finish, all this HTML page is replaced by a single canvas object where everything mm -hmm. happens. So when this you is running when you, off a Raspberry Pi, so it may be a little bit slow to load. Okay, so that that's <laughs> how you can see all these effects that when you hover over it with your mouse and the, the node expands like with an animation. You see, mm -hmm. it's slow. It's, it's an animation because everything is being draw and redraw many many times per second okay that's why is 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 hardware intensive uh, people are trying to guess where why is consuming 30 percent of the cpu and it's because it's a fucking animation okay yeah it's a game you're running it like a game okay so yeah maybe we can we can control and, and not 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 run so many frames per second but uh, somebody dedicated to that can figure it out. Uh, at the moment, mm -hmm. did it. it was not a problem. It was much less complex, much less things also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, it's an animation that is drawing and redrawing itself mm -hmm. many times per second. So there is, yeah, that's a huge part of the reason why it's consuming CPU like crazy. Yeah, I see. I said it explains why my fan is already uh, always running like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah. basically we already also touched the question or this uh, sub point basically just the architecture. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong that you mentioned basically that uh, it's kind of uh, based on the services that uh, uh, the UI is uh, drawn or uh, it's supposed to do uh, as less as possible on the UI itself. I mean, like in the browser and all the, I would say, calculation algorithms uh, recommended rather to be done on the server side. No, no uh, not exactly like this. It's not that it's supposed, it, a lot of things are done in the UI. Don't get me wrong. But the uh, okay, okay. So, so problematic things are the ones. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're going to use the Ethereum library, Mm -hmm. For for getting the private key based on a blockchain account, mm -hmm. I I prefer to do it at the Node.js mm -hmm. application that uh, is uh, uh, things usually run, okay, and not in the browser, okay. But mm -hmm. but any kind of things that require external libraries or require access to external uh, websites or things like this, then we move it to the to the client, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. okay. There are a lot of okay. things that are done in the browser. Yeah. Okay, great. So on the server side, that uh, you also mentioned that the, the, the endpoints are exposed to like services mentioned, so so that the, the UI can connect to and request, for example, some functionality. Is it correct? Or yes, yes, there are different okay. services. Mm -hmm. uh, that is here is very small for me to read. But I remember this, the web free service, the GitHub service, for example, we are interfacing GitHub for doing several stuff and we have a GitHub service, okay, inside the, the, the platform client, okay, so we consume the services from the web application, okay, and mm -hmm. there is, yeah, there are many, many different services, like, like 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so and when the application or the platform is uh, started, basically it uh, loads all that stuff, uh, basically prepares the HTTP server, lo uh, kind of initiates the services, serves uh, the uh, web page, basically, and then it waits for, for the events, for the uh, user interaction. Uh, whatever the user uh, does there, I don't know, 
does some changes in uh, the infrastructure or maybe execute some uh, uh, data mines or trading mines uh, or yeah like is, is it correct or, or is it missing something yeah well yes uh, essentially everything starts at the platform client which launches a browser instance that will navigate to a page of mm -hmm. the website of mm -hmm. the HTTP interface that the, the platform client already started so the the web browser is going to fetch all the page all the javascript that conform the web application mm -hmm. and it's going to start running it okay so by running means running this animation that is going to draw all the stuff in in the screen but also it's going to execute like a like the physics of this all of, of all these objects that are floating there mm -hmm. so then the user can do whatever it wants so uh, when the user uh, for example execute uh, data mining a data mining task mm -hmm. uh, i will describe you all, all, all of the things that are going on there okay for you mm -hmm. but there is part of the architecture that i haven't mentioned yet that is a, 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 a another piece okay another piece of the of the platform itself is what we call the task server okay the task server is a is a different node.js process that is going to run every time somebody runs a task okay mm -hmm. okay so uh, when you run uh, for example to download data from binance that is uh, this exchange raw data indicator type of task. Okay, uh, what you are what you are doing instead of we running everything inside the process of the of the platform client, we run a one process independent. Okay, this have several advantages. One is that uh, if the process if the process crashes, it doesn't crash everything. Okay, so it might crash only once, but it's isolated. Is well, it has a different advantage, but what exactly happens here? One of these 10 or so services that are inside the platform client is an, an event manager, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think it's called like that, event manager. So the event manager is a service that allows different components inside the system to 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 subscribe to certain type of events and to and to be notified when this event happens. This is that like a classical event manager. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of these ten services is an event manager. So um, when you execute a task, what what actually is going on is that uh, your your if I recall, because I this old stuff, you're you're firing like a like an event that a new task was executed, okay? And there is somebody inside the platform client listening to those events, okay, of a new task. So that somebody is, is some component in there is going to create a new Node.js process for that task, okay? And that Node.js process is going to be an independent process, okay? Mm -hmm. an independent application that is going to start running okay so that that independent process is going to be connected to the platform client and to the web app uh, only via events okay then the events are transmitted via the web socket interface okay mm -hmm. so the web the web uh, the web app is connected to the platform client via WebSocket and it fires this event to create a new task. Then inside the platform, a new process is created and in the process of bootstrapping this task process, uh, it connects also to the platform via WebSocket. And, mm -hmm. and in that way, then the, you can manage or, or, the, or the web app can access to the information of what is going on in the task because it start uh, listening for or it subscribe to the events of that particular task. Okay, so mm -hmm. when you when you see this this progress bar that is going around because the task is running, okay, it's because the web app is receiving every every second 
one event that it's saying that the task is alive. Okay, if the task crashes, mm -hmm. it stop uh, it stop receiving this heartbeat uh, event, and then mm -hmm. uh, we are not drawing anymore this this stuff. Okay, that's more or less for you to get. Mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Well, then that, that means that if you run more tasks, then more Node.js processes are are, are spinning, eh? spinning, and 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 everything then is connected via this event manager system, okay? That mm -hmm. is on top of the WebSocket connection between the web application and the platform client and all these tasks with the platform client, okay? Okay, cool. So uh, I would say uh, those were fruitful discussions, so that uh, should uh, some light uh, uh, get me more understanding I kind of get a better, uh, yeah, more clarity, I'd say. So if I would uh, kind of proceed with that, uh, let's say how to start, what, uh, what tasks to pick up, what the issues. So uh, I've seen that there are like uh, 100 open issues in the issue tracker. Is there any like, uh, say the priorities? Uh, of course, uh, as a starting point, I would choose something small, let's say. Uh, let's, uh, some bug fix or whatever, uh, but uh, with the proceeding, uh, getting more knowledge, getting more skills. Uh, so, uh, I, how should I kind of the, pick up the tasks? For example, is there any priorities? What we, we what uh, is need to be delivered first? Uh, or uh, yeah, yeah. The, the way we are organizing ourselves because the the project is getting bigger and bigger and. Mm -hmm. And we expect to continue growing. In fact, it's, it's a kind of project that it doesn't have an end because essentially uh, there is no, I mean, it's, it's, it's permissionless. That means that if you want to add a feature, then not, nobody can stop you to add it mm -hmm. uh, unless you are damaging or stealing information, doing something bad. But essentially it's, it's this kind of permissionless innovation that we have as an ethos so it will continue growing and and because it's going to continue growing we start dividing the 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 overall code base in different projects okay this mm -hmm. there is a list that is already there on github so this this each of these project is a is a chunk of functionality for example the task all this task management that i was talking about is a project itself, okay? Uh, the visual scripting with all these nodes that appear there that allows you to design stuff is a, is one of the projects, okay? Mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So um, the, the, the idea is that each of these projects uh, should have their own team to mm -hmm. move forward, okay? Because otherwise they, they get without maintenance and they start getting old. So the, the optimal situation is that each project has a team with a team leader, okay? And the team leader would be the one also, uh, not only recruiting the team, but also, um, but also prioritizing what is important and what is not for that project, mm -hmm. because each project should have a goal by itself, okay? Mm -hmm. So if, if you, if I'm doing, for example, I don't know, the peer-to-peer the -peer network it has a very clear goal, okay? Mm -hmm. so allow interconnect all, all these all these pieces across the internet, okay? In a mm -hmm. sense of the system way. Um, so the list of, of issues that you see there are issues that have, of course, not been resolved yet. Uh, but still, we are in this, in, we are still in the process of dividing the code base into projects and finding the leaders okay mm -hmm. at the moment you arrived that is today yesterday uh, there are still a lot of projects that are are part of a big big chunk of code mm -hmm. that still has not been divided and even the, the, the some pieces that have been divided still they don't have a, 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 a project leader right mm -hmm. much less a team okay so uh, from, from all these hundred issues there, first they need to be classified by project, which project they belong to. Mm -hmm. and, and once they have a leader, the leader will be able to prioritize them. Mm -hmm. 
some may have no sense or I don't know because um, there, there are there are some of those that are old like three four years old so mm -hmm. we are in the process of organizing ourselves in a way that is more scalable okay mm -hmm. because at the beginning it was very very few people and then more and more and more but still organizing all this in a way that scale uh, takes time right especially if you can keep everything working while you divide the code and, and, and do all this job. So my recommendation is that to get acquainted with the, with the code. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can, you can see some issues there, but the most pressing stuff is dropping the, in the channels, in the Telegram channel. When somebody has a problem, something is really not working and say, Hey, somebody fix this please because this is not working out and, and it gets even resolved before reaching this issues list. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but probably my recommendation or what I will recommend it is that, uh, use the software and whatever you see something that you don't like, or that you think you can make it better or that you can improve it, or then you go and do it. Uh, Probably it feels better than fixing a bug in some part of the code that you don't really like that stuff, you know? So find something that you can, you can improve. There are a lot of things to improve everywhere and just do it. And you will be learning on the way. And that's a, that's a way to start. If you have, if you have time, because it happens, uh, it may happen that you are not employed at the moment or, or whatever reason and you have a lot of time and you want to go like quickly and, and quickly deep into the project then check the list of projects see which one or ask around to see which one are still without leader and the ones that you like maybe you can take the leadership quickly this is like a, imagine we are founding a country 200 years ago okay we are, <laughs> we, are we are the first guys that arrived there to the place and say, okay, we will divide this country in 30 pieces. Okay. There are a few pieces, three, four, five pieces that already have a, a governor. How do you say? Governor. Governor. Yeah. They have a governor, but there are still a lot of states that they don't even have a fucking governor. You know, so it's a great opportunity. So you can be like fixing here and there, or you can say, okay, let me get let me be the governor of one of these places before somebody else come and be, become the governor, you know, and mm -hmm. like a big, a big piece of the stuff. And the one you like it more, you like mountains. Okay. This one you like plains. You can have this one. You like sea, you have this with coastline, you know, but this is like the stage we are now we are arriving and discovering that is a, a lot of things to build in a space where nobody, nobody imagined it yet that we can do uh, organize uh, stuff like this, especially if you think it when you add the peer-to-peer -peer network and all the other applications and coordinating millions of people. So we are we are uh, like discovering a new world, a new space. Okay, that is like a decentralized trading space. Okay, that is not exactly the same thing that um, like uh, what the guys are doing with uh, cryptocurrency or smart contract. Okay, it's not a smart contract space that allows you uh, decentralized execution, okay? Mm -hmm. or, or decentralized money like Bitcoin. This is more about decentralized coordination, okay? The, 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 what we are saying in, in, in general is how do we coordinate millions of people in a in a peer-to-peer censorship resistant way via an open network that is pseudonymous, okay? So that people can get coordinated for example, for trading, but it could be for something else also. You know? But let's say for trading, okay, in a way that nobody can even know who is being coordinated, okay? So mm -hmm. you might coordinate millions of people to do something like entering into the same trade in a way that nobody can say, hey, you, Martin, you cannot do this because you're being coordinated. No, nobody can know that you're, you're part of the coordination, okay? Because you, end, you 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 plug into the network in a pseudonymous way, okay. So 
So it's going to be a fucking mess. But well, that's what we are doing. We discover a space that nobody saw it before. Nobody saw it even coming, and people is not even understanding the impact that this is going to have. Okay, and probably we don't understand the impact that this is going to have. But it, it, you can compare it with an with the like people when they discover the the land of the U.S. Okay, and they say, okay, let me grab this this place that I will call Texas, okay? And let me be the governor of this because I, I arrived first, okay? So this is the more or less the situation we are now. Mm -hmm. uh, four or five states that have a governor and many others that are empty waiting for somebody to take them and then to grow a population there and then to make it succeed, okay? As part of a bigger project that is the US or the Super Alagos project, the, the, the bigger picture stuff, okay? Okay, cool. This is an interesting discussion. Yeah, I kind of uh, as when I came to Super Argos, it feels to me like nothing I ever uh, seen. So uh, in comparison to some other tools, so I, I got kind of excited about that. That's also uh, the, the reason why I'm looking into that and why the, this call happens in the first place. So that I also think that I have. Uh, something to offer. Uh, so as I mentioned, that I'm coming from the test automation and the kind of the CI uh, background. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, uh, I hope that I can utilize my experience, your source experience here and uh, can that will, yeah, be that, able to utilize that. That would be awesome because we are lacking that right now. We are lacking the automated testing part of the project. And yeah, that would be awesome to have it. But at the same time, as, as a developer, you might be a, might want to be the governor of one of the states there, if you want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. If that would be, uh, yeah, possible. I have also the experience with the le leading people. I'm six, yeah, already six years uh, team leader. So something I experienced as well. <laughs> So maybe uh, time's running. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that we are not going to cover everything. But uh, maybe I would be interested in, the, in uh, the two areas if you'll be able to make it. Let's say the uh, coding itself. So let's say I've decided uh, to really jump on and I, I want to code something. I, I've seen something that I can improve, or let's say uh, do uh, even the bigger job like uh, let's say extracting some. Uh, project uh, out of the foundation, let's say. So uh, is there any guidance, any recommendations, any conventions, let's say, uh, and the, in, let's say the language, uh, the version of the language that uh, we want to comply or the code base complies, if it's uh, whatever the Node.js 16 uh, can, can execute, or if we rather stick to some older version or Anything coming to your mind? <laughs> no, that is what Brett was saying. The, the 16 is good and is is what it has been working. Mm -hmm. Brett, you were testing 17 also with, with our um, I think I have 17 running on my Windows desktop here, which is where I do most of my development, and I haven't run into an issue with it. I did see somebody post in the channel that they had a bug, and it turned out it was because it was Node 17 that they were running. Um, and like I said, the Docker containers are using 16 and I think for a while I was running 15 here on my desktop and it was working fine too, but I think 14, uh, is a little bit too old. I think that's what a lot of, um, the Debian and Ubuntu Linux versions ship with. So I think if you are running on Linux, you'll definitely need to upgrade the version of Node.js um to something that's more current um and then just to kind of jump in and speak to how i got started um i basically just said this is what i'm good at and this is what i want out of the platform and i see that this is missing so i just kind of jumped in and started working on it so that, that, yeah, that is that is really very very important because one thing that i I was thinking lately when we, you know that we are starting a PR campaign now, right? Mm -hmm. These people put you to think exactly how you're going to explain what you're doing. And one of the 
key differentiators that I see in this project with so many other, if you think about, there are thousands of bots there, like open source, closed source, like centralized, mm -hmm. decentralized. But the key differentiator in my view is that what we are trying to do is not build a bot for people to use, but it's the opposite. It's like uh, what we are trying to do in the end is allow people to do what they are best at. Okay? Like Brett is an expert on Docker, right? And you are an expert on testing, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, somebody else might be an expert on something else, an, an expert trader. Thomas is a data scientist, okay? He's an expert on analyzing data and creating stuff. So there is, there is no project out there that allows you to be yourself and to be the expert on what you really know, okay? If you want to run any of this open source software or whatever spot that you buy or, or rent or whatever, then you have to be the expert on Docker, the expert on testing, the expert developer, the expert data scientist, the expert trader, the expert on machine learning, and the expert on everything, okay? So you have to really become an expert on everything to outcompete other people in the market, right? Mm -hmm. but, but the core idea here is why don't we be ourselves and everyone do uh, what is expert on and, and knows exactly how to do. And let's team up so that we can uh, together, Okay, go to the market as a, as a bigger force, okay? More clever, more intelligent, faster, stronger, right? But in a way that instead of putting money together into a fund, like a company would do, let's do it in a way that is with no counterparty risk, okay? So we mm -hmm. use a peer-to-peer -peer network, so everybody execute the trades from their own devices, okay? Mm -hmm. But maybe we share, and we are not sharing only the technology that we are creating. It's not, it doesn't stop there. It goes beyond that because in, at least in my head, the plans go, we also might be sharing infrastructure, okay? What happens is, for example, I tell you, look, I can put, I don't know, 100 Raspberry Pi to run, okay? Would you, Brett, install that and, and put it like in, in the Docker and all your, your, do your magic there? and. Could somebody create the indicators and, the, and the, like Thomas to, to, to know what we are going to, to process? Can somebody do the, the, the part of running the, the data mining to download all the markets of all the exchange and, and put all the data uh, available for a, for, a, for a bigger team, okay? And can somebody call, uh, take care of the back testing, okay? Let's, let's put 50 machines to do back testing Okay, but somebody has to go and check what works, what doesn't work, okay? So if, if we can do together, but separated, okay, what we are good at, not only at the technology level, that is the code that we are going, that we are writing today, but also at the infrastructure level, then we can create a kind of entity that doesn't exist today. That is not the typical whale of a guy that has a lot of capital or a bank that have their own team of mathematicians and traders and this and that. But we create like a, like a, like a bigger entity because potentially it doesn't have the constraint, okay? A bank is limited, even if they have a lot of money, to the amount of people they can hire, okay? You might hire 20 mathematicians, you might hire 30 mathematicians. But, but if, if we create the right structure, maybe we can crowdsource, I don't know, a thousand, of mathematician, 2,000 trader, 5,000 people uh, that provides, that they are making the back test, and 10,000 people that are doing whatever, you know? So maybe we can create a crowd that scales much more than all this stuff. So we, are, we, we would put ourselves in a category above these whales. We would be like mm -hmm. the whaler, like the whaler, the ones hunting the whales, you know? Because we, we have the technology and, and the organization to grow even even bigger, okay? To, to grow to a scale that nobody can compete with you later. Nobody can disrupt Wikipedia, why? Because Wikipedia has 300,000 editors working for free. How do you compete if you are, if you are Encyclopedia Britannica or any other encyclopedia? Uh, how do you compete with your employees 
is somebody that has 300,000 people working for free. You cannot compete with that. So, <laughs> I yeah. see your point. Uh... <laughs> so how do you compete with an entity that have probably 10,000 people working for free and they are all expert in their areas, okay? And they are all trading the same stuff without counterparty risk, even if they don't know each other personally or never met or never talked to or whatever. They just well, plug in the network that connect everyone together. Yeah? I'm sorry to jump in here, but apparently I forgot that Google Meet has a free call limit and we may be shut off here in a second. Sorry about that. I totally forgot that uh, that Google Meet for free version has uh, a limited time span. Um, <laughs> uh, just checking if my mic works well. So do you hear me well? Looks good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Are we live? Or not yet. We are live. We are still going. Yeah. We didn't, okay. So we didn't lose uh, anybody. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. So so we covered a uh, very interesting topic. So uh, I want to uh, thank you again. So it's helped me a lot uh, to kind of get uh, the insights to, to that and more understanding. So it's really helpful for me and uh, it's I'd say fruitful. Yeah. I, I would say it even exceeds my expectations. So. We are not uh, in, in the place that I was describing. That is like a vision to, to get there. But yeah, then, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I got it that way. <laughs> yeah, that's where we are going, essentially. And yeah, that's why we are preparing this with all these details and these capabilities. Because we are thinking of that future. I don't know when we are going to arrive in a year or two. It depends on how many people we we can put uh, together to towards toward that direction, but we we are quite advanced at the same time. At the same time, we're quite advanced. Once we have the possibility to to glue all the things that we have already built across the internet, then it's going to be even closer. Mm -hmm. It's going to be even closer. But yeah, that's the direction we're going. What do you Brett? think, Brett? Brett oh, sorry, I didn't think? hear the question. What do you think about that? Um, yeah, I mean, I think um, I haven't had a chance to jump in and start organizing issues and coming up with my own tickets, um, but that is something that I do every day at my, my day job. So... Um, I, I look forward to trying to give some more direction or at least putting the thoughts that I have in my head out there in terms of what I would like to see from Super Algos and um, hoping that other people can jump on the things before I get to them. Um, obviously, the things that I come up with are things that I would like to work on also, but there's always things out there to hop on and pick up and... Um, I'm learning JavaScript, not from scratch necessarily, but I don't use it day to day and I've never worked on a project this large, uh, as for JavaScript. So it was all kind of like learning everything from scratch. And, um, it's definitely been easier picking up small things, which is why I started working on like the social bots and mm -hmm. just saying like, all right. I know how to send a message to Discord or Slack, and let me figure out how to do that in JavaScript. And um, it, it's worked out really well. And I guess, sorry to kind of go a little bit off topic here, but I don't. I, I kind of missed that. I don't have my my video up next to everybody the way that I did in uh, Google Meet when I'm sharing my screen here. If you guys could still see the browser, hopefully, with the yeah, questions yes. that are up. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think I think in terms of the organization of the project and where the teams have been set up and how all of that is going, it, it seems like it's a, a, a good idea to start implementing now and uh, and hopefully get that going and have other people hop in and take over and 
and pick up different parts of the code that need some love. Exactly. Absolutely. Perfect. Do you have more questions? Any of you? Well, uh, I do. <laughs> or there are uh, still like four topics we covered. If, uh, well, regarding the kind of how to contribute guide, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I haven't seen anything like uh, put down or written down, like uh, the, I would say the reference for anybody coming here. So that's something, uh, if it's not existent, uh, I would love to do that, uh, as I said, uh, to, to use that opportunity. So, and to, uh, kind of thinking uh, where to place that. So uh, I was just maybe from the beginning, uh, I was thinking like give up, uh, give up uh, pages. So at least uh, something to start with. Uh, what do you think about that? <laughs> Or what, what do you mean exactly in terms of what decisions? Uh, I, I mean, no, 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 no. I was referring still to the coding. I will get to the decisions if you have oh, time sorry. to go there. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I was talking about the how to contribute guide or something like that or how to start. I, I don't know how to call it. Uh, so, uh, that, uh, basically, I would extend on these topics, on these questions, on the, the, the discussion that we have uh basically put uh, something down write write it down kind of transcript let's say so that uh, people yeah, can that have uh, as, as a reference yeah that would uh, be so. amazing and the place to put it is in the on, on the documentation of the of, of the same system so you create a topic there in the, do, at the docs of how to contribute and you can create different pages for each subtopic and then you will have like a collection of of different subtopics explaining from different angles or uh -huh. yeah so means, just, you mean like uh, into the documentation in the application itself yeah because somebody yeah, is, yeah. Working, is working to export from there to create a website of all the documentation yes yeah. yes that, that's i've seen that's actually a good idea so that didn't came to my uh, come to my mind yeah okay great it sounds yeah, that's the place good. to do it. But it would be a very good contribution to have a guide on this. Yeah. Okay, cool. So maybe uh, fast forward a bit. Uh, so uh, the, uh, there's the next uh, section or the topic is validation. So we discuss basically, I'm covering it here just to uh, maybe kind of repeat that. So the, what I've seen there are no unit tests, right? In, uh, uh the application itself no system tests integration tests and anything like that any uh, say environment infrastructure created yet is that yeah. correct yes just, correct. Just, just, yeah okay and uh sonar cube analysis do you know what, what is sonar cube um i haven't used it myself i have looked into it uh at my day job um uh -huh. but um I'm not sure offhand if they have a free tier or not, um, but I am. Uh... There used to be for open source uh, projects, mm -hmm. uh, but I would need to check that some time ago that, that I've checked that. So uh, that's a quite cool tool. So it does the source code analysis and tries to kind of mm -hmm. catch some code smells, uh, some potential bugs, some issues. They yeah. have, have uh, quite comprehensive support for JavaScript as well. So uh, it's worth to there experiment are, with that. I'm sorry to cut you off there. I didn't mean to. Um, there are several other open source projects that I'm familiar with that I've used before. Um, there's like coveralls and um, some others that are very similar to that. They do the static code analysis. Mm -hmm. um, GitHub has Dependabot, which is pretty useful for mm -hmm. going through and trying mm -hmm. to find security issues in code. And um, I know Docker itself uh, has just teamed up with Sneak or S N Y K uh, as mm -hmm. the company that does Docker and um, other um, code security checks. Um, so those are things that um, are potential that we could definitely add to the project and are free, free for open source projects um, and. I think that they provide value. I actually recently implemented those over the last year or similar projects over the last year at my, my day job. And 
Um, some people look at them, some people don't. Some people think that, you know, doing um, like lint tests and things like that aren't necessarily helpful. But um, for me, learning how to code, I think having, you know, an idea of what the community thinks are best practices helps in terms of like structuring code and things to do and things not to do. So I'm, I'm for it. Yep. Uh, uh, my opinion is I, I live a lot of uh, Sonar Cube, so I use it for, I say maybe more than 10 years. So it's, uh, of course, for Java world, not, not uh, JavaScript uh, and uh, that area is amazing. So uh, maybe that, that, that's maybe the area at least that you mentioned, if I would see something missing that uh, I would add. That, so that's exactly that area, <laughs> basically. The, the, the test, testing uh, infrastructure, uh, let's say, coming from uh, that, I would say, area, test automation quality, uh, quality assurance, I would say. So I also pay big attention on uh, the highest quality code. So that's that would cover that as well. So let's see. Yes. So um, maybe getting back to the ground. So uh, today, if I would, let's say, fix something or implement something or change something in this uh, Super Argos application, how I would validate, basically, I didn't, I did what is expected and I haven't uh, broken anything. So it's the, the only only mean today comes to my mind is manual testing. Is that correct, or is there something else that I'm missing? That's pretty much what I do. I just uh, make sure I run the platform, uh, try and validate it myself by hand, and then I wait for somebody else to say something's broken before I try and go back and fix it. <laughs> yeah, the the the, the, the more, uh, I mean. There are a few things here. Um, the, the more, let's say, important functionality is the one that is done during the usage of the getting starting workspace. The, it's very important that people, when they come, they can go through these tutorials. The tutorials should work well. And also the data mining should work well. And the back testing that you do there, it should work, work well and the live test that you do there should work well. So uh, when, when we make uh, changes in anything that can impact that, then what we do is a manual test of, of the things that a new user would do. That is, mm -hmm. like this getting started tutorial, uh, seeing if the tutorial navigates well the application, and do a data mining, a back test, and a live train. And if that works, then chances are that most of the things that are relevant will work. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. And the other thing is that because of this division of the, the project in different projects, okay, we already have set up, well, Brett set it up, uh, the, 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 the project, all the, the code owner of each chunk of the code base. Uh, automatically gets to review in GitHub the code that affects the part of, of the code base that is his project, right? So we are paying attention, especially when people make changes in the transactional part of the code base, the one that is called algorithmic trading project, because that handles money and, and between all the bugs that the system may have, the most critical ones are the ones that can make you lose money, right? Mm -hmm. so that is very much to pay attention. So, well, these two things. The, what, what is inside the getting started tutorial and whatever um, has the potential to make you lose money is, is, is the things to focus. Mm -hmm. From there, you can, you can grow and test everything, but those are the two things more important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's important. That is interesting. Thanks. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, the next thing uh, is a caption staying in loop. Uh, so basically thinking, if I would, let's say, 
in future would quit my job and uh, want to work on Super Argos, let's say, uh, exclusively, how to stay in loop, like, I don't know. Uh, so you covered that uh, a bit. Uh, so that, that, uh, right now, it's like of more of forming, I would say. So because, uh, as you mentioned, that uh, the teams are not formed yet, so it doesn't have the team leads. So and I, I guess that even the processes are not cleared yet, uh, if, correct me if I'm wrong. So and uh, that's uh, that basically covers or touches also the planning and prioritizations uh, as you described before that uh, the teams or maybe even the projects are not yet uh, extracted from the foundations, so that uh, this process is uh, maybe not, I wouldn't say not not there but not not, not that formalized uh, if I would say this way. Well, yeah, we are in a transition of. Oh. We are self-organizing into teams and extracting mm -hmm. projects and finding team leaders and finding team members. And yeah, we are in a transition. And on the other side, we have the economic part of the project that is, mm -hmm. is not just a, an open source project, like a traditional open source project, it's a token incentivized open source project. That means that there is a token that is being given to contributors for their contributions, okay? Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with, with, with that, it's because you just arrived, but in a nutshell, the project pays with the issuing of the, its own token to whoever contributes, okay? And because it's a decentralized organization, the project entity doesn't know who contributed what or how valuable is what everybody contribute. And so it outsources this knowledge from the community itself. So we develop a governance system that the community uh, of token holders can vote first to prioritize uh, which are the things that are important and which are not, giving weight mm -hmm. to the different pools of tokens that are going to be distributed. And then uh, anybody can make claims. With these claims means that you might claim in the next distribution that you made the testing system or testing infrastructure okay mm -hmm. so uh, people will vote to see we there will be a pool for testing or something like this they will vote the pool to see how how important is that in relation to everything else okay and then they will they will vote for your claims okay so if you vote for your claim, then you will get tokens in the next distribution. So it's not the project as an entity, but it's the project outsources this, this knowledge of who did, who added which value to the community itself via the governance system. So uh, over time, it uh, and and once the token, uh, the, the market of the token gets bootstrapped because we just listed the token. And we are bootstrapping the market. We are exactly in the process where we need to find people to put liquidity into the market because it's quite illiquid right now. So that once it has it's bigger in liquidity, then people who are getting tokens every month because they are contributing, they can sell some piece of this token and maybe they can leave out of that. Maybe they can leave their job, as you were saying, and work 100% uh, for the project. Uh, hopefully, that would happen at some point in time, once we finish the bootstrapping and the market is liquid enough, and whoever is working now part-time might want to decide to leave their jobs and work full-time. And it's, it's, it is a conscious plan that that should become a, a possible outcome, a possible reality for not only for the people that are working today, but also for for a bigger crowd. Hopefully, we could be maintaining like uh, hundreds or thousands of people by the issue of the token. Imagine any successful project in the top uh, ten or top fifty today. They are issuing tokens in the millions of dollars per day. So, mm -hmm. they are using all that all that all that buying power to secure their network. Okay, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all the other, 99%. Some of them have these bounty programs or treasury, whatever, but we use 100% of the issuing 
in incentivizing contribution. That means if one day we we would have the, 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 the value of the token, the equivalent for, I, I, let's say, hundred thousand a million dollar per day on incentivization power that can pay a lot of salaries you know so the, the the rate of innovation that we expect in this project should be unprecedented comparing to any other project out there imagine if all the money that miners are getting in bitcoin for securing the network would be paid in development in developers you will have a fucking army of developers of ten thousand <laughs> 100,000 developers developing the same is crazy, no? But if we can bootstrap this stuff, we might end up there. And we might be the first also to, to have an army of developers, an army of traders, an army of mathematicians, and all well paid by the same project to produce all this technology and trading intelligence, you know? So if we can bootstrap this, it can be, can be huge. It can be huge if you can, can take it to that level. But yeah, that's part cool. of the vision where we're going. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. It's important to set, set the vision. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the, to cover this uh, area, and there are last two to, to cover. So one, uh, the uh, next one is basically if I would do, let's say, the bigger changes. Let's say I would decide to extract one of the projects. Uh, out of the foundation project, uh, and that um, I don't know how to require some bigger there changes, some... architectonical, uh, and uh, whatever, uh, or maybe I would decide to do uh, something different. So I would love to, before doing the changes, I would like to consult uh, basically that uh, what I'm going to do with somebody uh, or community uh, or bunch of people, uh, let's say. So maybe the question is. Uh, where to, where to ask the question? Where to kind of uh, get the people together? Uh, if it, if the, let's say the Telegram uh, de develop uh, develop channel is the correct place, or yeah. uh, the is it on the forum rather, or the develop the forum is very young. It has one or two weeks old, so people are still not used to that. Maybe someday we will use the forum for that. But today is the well. Today, if you're going to do something or pick something that first talk to me because I am the most up to date mm -hmm. in what is doing, who is doing what. And then we can discuss it also in the developed channel because may, maybe some other people want to join you and you team up with somebody mm -hmm. or maybe not or whatever. But essentially there are uh, three things at that level that you can do. You can extract one project from foundation as you were saying. If you like one of the the project ideas that are still there okay there are projects that have been extracted already they they, mm -hmm. they are separated maybe not 100 percent, but 80 90 percent separated and they still don't have a team leader there okay so there are a bunch of uh, four five i don't know five, six maybe that are already extracted or maybe you want to do something uh, that is not even listed in all that that list okay and this is very important because uh, people still haven't realized yet, but there are a lot of things that can be added to the project using the infrastructure we already built. Okay. Once, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Brett, but now that, that you know how to create these nodes with these app schema files, okay, mm -hmm. create menus and define which are the childs of the node, who they can attach to, who they can reference, and once you know that, you are more powerful than before because you might want to create a new project, like for example, uh, I don't know, something DeFi related or uh, this Ethereum integration to mine the data of an Ethereum node or, or even something uh, divergent a little bit more. Once you know how to do that, you can create a project with a set of nodes for that project with its own documentation, with its own icons, with all stuff that leverage all the infrastructure that is already built. Because you can mm -hmm. you have a charting system, you have distributed tasks, you have a way to manage plugins, it's already integrated with GitHub, you can deploy in different machines at, at your premises, and they are coordinated by events. 
yeah, and then you will have this peer-to-peer -peer network that is going to allow you to plug all your in-house infrastructure with my house infrastructure with bread house infrastructure you know so mm -hmm. we can create a type of decentralized application that doesn't need to be 100 percent related to trading you might come up with something that is uh, loans or whatever uh, in, in mm -hmm. the near future mm -hmm. that leverage all this infrastructure it's not decentralized autonomous execution like a smart contract platform but it's also decentralized in another way because it runs in my at my house, at your house, and the bread house, it's also censorship resistant. Okay, it's also so it, it has a different set of property, but it's, they are already quite interesting. Okay, there is a, a lot of infrastructure to manage blockchain account, to manage wallets, to connect to exchanges, to execute orders. We will have a portfolio manager. So. Once we have all these pieces together, more people can come and start adding stuff on the sides, not necessarily at the, at the core of mm -hmm. trade, but you can add more stuff at the side and expand the system in other dimensions, okay? Leveraging the, the infrastructure. Once, uh, once you know how to do all this stuff with the, these nodes, and then you create application very quickly. I did the governance system that is not a, a simple stuff in a few months. Because I I know the all the infrastructure that is there and how to use it. Not because I'm a genius, but I just know all the other stuff. So I just reuse what I already know, and I and, and a, go, a governance system. Think about it. Has no relationship at all with trading. It has no relation with trading. What is the relation between a governance system that allows you this decentralized organization for people to vote and to distribute a token with trading zero? There is no relation. So that means that you can create any kind of application with this. If, he, if I created a governance system, I can create whatever the fuck it comes to my mind, okay? Or to your mind or to Brett's mind, okay? Once you know how to put these pieces together, you can quickly create a application that leverage all this infrastructure. And then you go with there. It's like, yeah, we, we know there are going to be 50 states here, Texas, whatever. But maybe you say, no, but it's also one that I want to create that it will be called Mexico, you know, that you guys are not seeing it, but I, we are going to have a border and we are going to trade and whatever, you know. So the world doesn't end there, okay? So all this infrastructure can be used for other type of decentralized application that can be related and can, and can be expanding the project like in other dimensions. So keep an eye on that also. Mm -hmm. Maybe not for, for for your first choice, but once you do one of these, yeah, projects, absolutely. <laughs> you continue with some other stuff, you know, and you, yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, so we're uh, getting to the end. Uh, so my last question is basically from my job. I'm kind of used to do. <clears throat> um, do the decisions not um, just myself, but rather in the team. So, for example, uh, I. Uh, to, I basically put the example here uh, currently that we are uh, discussing the testing framework. Let's say, if I would, uh, I just quickly checked uh, b before uh, our meeting. So, uh, what are, are the options on the market basically for J JavaScript or for, for Node.js uh, regarding the unit testing? And they're like, um, I would say, four of them are most used, like uh, Jest, Mocha, uh, Jasmine. And there's one more, uh, don't remember, uh, but there's even more. So uh, what I'm used to do is kind of uh, put together the requirements what uh, <clears throat> the team kind of expects uh, from such kind of tool, because uh, every team, every code base have different specifics, different requirements. So this always needs to be evaluated to, uh, to the specific uh, requirements. Uh, collect a uh, number of the options and evaluate those uh, against the requirements. And based on that, I uh, you choose usually, uh, hopefully, the best option. Uh, but, because I don't know a shit about these tools or, or testing. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm, I'm not <laughs> saying that you should know. So, so the point is, the point is that, that you, somebody who knows, I don't know about that. So, yeah, the, yeah, the, the point. Like a, point Company the where I'm the boss. It's, yeah, the, the, it's, the, it's a community where everybody is an expert on something. 
and I have no idea about what you're talking about. So most likely you are going to decide on that because you are working on that and you know about that. So that, that, that's what you have to change in your mind that you're not coming to a company where somebody is going to tell you, yeah, we are going to use that. And no, no uh, that, that's not what I meant. Uh, I meant no, no, the feedback, feedback from others. Stuff, so least, Yeah, no, no, feedback, of, of course. And maybe there is people who knows even more than you about that. I don't know. Yeah. All, all I'm saying is that it's totally. not me. So. <laughs> I, I haven't said that. <laughs> so I, I meant like... Uh, what I used to do, kind of compile this document with basically pros cons uh, of uh, various tools, and whoever I don't know uh, that could be guys uh, having some knowledge, let's say about the Jasmine, about Jest, or somebody else about the Mocha, and uh, they, they can uh, kind of uh, yeah, express what, what, the, their opinion on do, that. Mine. What you need, what you need to do, very specific and concrete, you have to go uh, and create a, a new Telegram group about testing okay and then you invite everybody you see there that likes that topic and know about that into that group okay and if you are the one who knows more then you declare yourself the team leader of that if somebody if you find somebody that knows much more than you then you say okay then you are the team leader okay and i will help you okay more or less that the idea and then then everything you do you discuss it there in that group and you decide which test tool what you're going to test. You can come and ask me, for example, what is the most important things? You don't need to be broken. And I will tell you whatever makes people lose money, that's number one. And whatever people find when they arrive for the first time, we want people to have a very good initial experience. Okay, that's very important. Mm -hmm. The rest is important, but not as much important as that. But beside that, I cannot tell you much more about testing because I know I'm not an expert on that. Yeah, yeah. The, the the this thing was just an example. <laughs> I meant like uh, it's basically uh, I don't know uh, what I'm used to do that uh, we collectively uh, kind of do the decisions. Doesn't have to be just this thing. Let's say change of the architecture. I don't know reworking something. So we you know, try to put uh, together like various options and uh, trying to evaluate them so, because. From past, I have the experience that uh, jumping for the first solution is not always the best solution. <laughs> so, and uh, in long term, it uh, kind of returns back that uh, to be refactor change in a way whatsoever. So, so uh, it's uh, what I'm kind of the proposing or used to, or rather using these kind of the, the decisions. It can maybe take some time to really do the uh, proper investigation and evaluation, like the initial. Uh, in, investment is a bit bigger, but uh, with, in long term, it pays off. That, that uh, usually, uh, usually the, the better solution is chosen. So not, not just regarding the test automation right now uh, here, basically for whatever. Anytime we need to do the, the bigger decisions or changes, so usually I kind of try to do the co collective decisions. So, and my question was basically, uh, if I would want to do something like this here, uh, say I would see that uh, I would change or I would do something uh, differently in the code, uh, so something bigger. So I don't want to do it like prematurely or just right away without this, without discussion uh, first or, mm -hmm. or consulting. So the, the, before you said, uh, you told me that I should first uh, uh, come to you as you could discuss that. So uh, uh, that, that that's uh, that's basically it. <laughs> so what I would say yeah. is, um, you know, if you first feel free to make any PR that you want, it can always be declined, and it can always be changed later. Um, but second, that's what the the Telegram and Discord groups are for. If you want to discuss things, throw out ideas, be like, hey, I'm looking at these five options. I'm new to this. This is just what Google told me, you know, are the top options that people use. Does anybody have a preference? If people have a preference, you know, they may speak up and, um, and, and help guide you where you need to go. But otherwise, it's probably just up to you. If you have an interest in putting it in and adding it to the project, add it to the project. And that's, that's really the first step. Exactly. My, my, my philosophy, uh, I, 
I think is good in this sense is, let's say I want to do something, or you want to do something, or Brett wants to do something. Uh, if you are the one who is going to invest your time and your effort to do it, then you are the first one who have the choice of how you are going to do it. Okay? Because no, nobody can come and tell me, no, you have to do it in this way, but I am the one who have to go and spend all night coding, you know? So you, you should be, you should have the right to, to, to be the, the top decision making in whatever is your own initiative, okay? To add value. Mm -hmm. Only, but at the same time, you have to be open-minded in the way that if you see that somebody knows more than you in something, okay? Mm -hmm. Doing the peer-to-peer -peer network, okay? But I found a guy that knows more than me about peer -to -peer. so I will listen because mm -hmm. essentially he knows more than me. So what can I say? Okay, so I, I, I will not hit the wall just because I'm, I'm stubborn. You know, so always try to take advice for people who knows more than you in one specific time, and and that's it. But essentially, the philosophy here is if you're going to fix something or do something new. And then you have the priority to decide how it's going to be. Maybe somebody then comes later and improve it, okay? That doesn't mean it's going to stay forever. But at mm -hmm. least for the first time something is done, if you are going to invest your time, then it's up to you, okay? More or less, this is the philosophy. Okay, that's fair. Yes. Okay, so and that's it from my list, I would say. <laughs> Sure. sure. Um, just to kind of pick up some of the comments that were made in the chat while we were talking, um, the binary applications are running Node 14, apparently. So I guess Node 14 does work. Um, maybe I was running 12 or something before, and that's when I was having issues. So I guess uh, Node.js version 14 plus is what Super Algo supports. And then um, what else do we have? Uh, the dev snapshots are executed on a schedule in um, the GitHub workflows. So I guess those are created nightly. I didn't specifically see, but if you want to check that out, that's in that .github directory under the workflows. Mm -hmm. And um, ba -ba -ba -ba. what else? Um, I think everybody wants automation on the tutorials so that was also brought up in the in the chat here um but yeah if there isn't anything else um we can br do another one of these next week or you know in a couple weeks get back into some some deeper discussions deeper into the code base whatever anybody wants um and anybody else watching if you want to come on and start asking questions you know jump in telegram jump in the discord um, maybe we can invite you on and have a long hour and a half discussion about the code base as well next week. Um, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, again, we were discussing super algos with, uh, Luis, the lead developer and founding member of the super algos project. Uh, Martin was kind enough to join us and, and ask a ton of questions that were very valuable, I think. Um, and I hope that everybody got a lot of value out of this. Um, again, follow us in Telegram, in Discord, uh, at SuperAlgos on Twitter. Uh, there's a subreddit, SuperAlgos. What else, what other platforms do we have? Facebook groups, uh, yeah. everybody. Just You're ready. You're run ready. the platform, put in some pull requests, help us uh, help us build out the future of Super Algos. Amazing. Thank you for having us, uh, Brett. No it's problem. Amazing. Thanks for thanks for joining. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Talk to you all later. See ya. See you next time. Yeah. Good night. Bye.